Scott here uh, from C3. Uh, I am the Family Ministries Director. And uh, hey, we are coming back. Uh, I saw that we did not have a Devo yesterday um, because we have Memorial Day. And uh, so I hope that you all had a great uh, Memorial Day. You guys got a chance to just be appreciative of those that uh, went before us and uh, fought. Um, for our country and and still those that are uh, continually putting themselves in harm's way and now we've got a whole new set of people that put themselves in harm's way which is those that work in our hospital systems and um, all that kind of stuff um, taking care of those things so uh, so good man there's so many things that happened this weekend it's crazy um, <clears throat> there was a wedding uh, that happened this weekend which is awesome uh, some good uh, well one student, he was a student of mine, which is crazy to see, start seeing students when I was a uh, youth guy, youth pastor, um, that now just got married. It makes me feel just so old. See all this gray? This stuff coming in? Oh my gosh, it's just so bad. Um, and then uh, I get home, though, um, from, we, we spent some time away, um, and uh, I get home, and man, I've got a cucumber plant that is dead. I'm like, what is going on? It must have gotten cold over the weekend. I don't know what happened, but anyway, got that going. Um, and then I've got a, I've got all these mounds of dirt in my yard right now. And um, so I'm breaking out this guy. Uh, this is going to be, hopefully, in between these teeth right here, I will have a mole at some point. Um, I'm hoping, anyway. Um, I've never caught one with this. Um, if anybody's got any other uh, ideas on how to kill a mole, um, please let me know. Um, because I want to kill it really bad. You ever wanted to kill something? Um, yeah, the mole. Hopefully not a person, but mole. Um, animal that's destroying my yard so um, uh, you know whatever you got if you guys got some great idea I'm gonna smoke them out if this doesn't work I might do both I might smoke them out and try to trap them but I don't know who knows I've been dealing with this last year I was dealing with this stupid mole never got him um, or her I don't know um, but I'm gonna try hard so hey last week uh, we uh, were talking about holiness. I don't know if you guys remember. You probably don't at all. But um, I'm kind of still on that same kick. Uh, discipleship's a big deal for me. Um, I always think about uh, just like taking your thoughts captive, um, the things that you do, uh, trying uh, to honor God in everything I do and say. Um, and so some passages have been popping into my head. Uh, and it's tough. Discipleship um, is sometimes pretty difficult uh, putting together habits because it's it's like working out. <laughs> Anybody that uh, has tried to lose weight um, or to stick to a regimen, you can do good for a little while, but unless you make it just part of your life, um, it very quickly uh, fades. And all it takes is a weekend, like Memorial Day weekend, and you get out of habit of doing something that you've been doing. And, um, oh, ooh, I got something to kill and mole or grow. Ooh, okay. I'm watching that. Uh, thank you. Um, but uh, if you ever get out of the habit of doing something, uh, you, could, you just lose it. Uh, and you have to, it feels like you have to start all over again. So, um, <clears throat> so I just wanted to encourage you guys with this, but also know that it's not like magic pill, right? It just is something that you have to work at. But we work at it because we want to honor God. And so, um, first passage uh, that kind of kicks us off, gets gets us started here, is um, Ephesians 4, 22 uh, and 23, or through 24. It says, You were taught with regard to your former way of life to put off your old self, which is being corrupted by its deceitful desires to be made new in your attitude of your minds and to put on the new self, created to be like God in true righteousness 
and holiness. That sounds so difficult to take off our old, put on the new, and to, to live in that way. Uh, 1 Peter 16, uh, though, kind of kind of jumps off in it, and it says this. It says, uh, well, all the way back up as, at 14, 1 14, it says, As obedient children, do not conform to the evil desires you had when you lived in ignorance, when you didn't know, when you didn't know about God, right? But just uh, as he who called you to be holy, so be holy in all you do. For it is written, be holy because I am holy. Um, and in our society where we aren't approaching life with a Christian worldview most of the time, um, we're seeing that you know sex sells everything from clothes to chewing gum. Um, and often the value of religious tradition trumps um, our relationship with God. Um, so how does one aspire to live a life set apart from sin? And how do we balance that with the need to have some connection to popular culture without being becoming a part of it? Or without creating a Christian subculture that alienates us from the rest of society and doesn't allow us to fulfill the Great Commission that we find in Matthew, at the end of Matthew 28, uh, where we're called to go and make disciples of all nations, you know, baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Um, and the good thing about that, in the end, at the very end of that passage in Matthew 28, um, it says, I, though I am with you always to the very end. And that's, that's, the, that's the catch right there. Uh, because even though we have this, this weight of, of a task, and that's becoming holy, right? Becoming new, becoming um, some, something new that we can stand before God who is holy is just God, that uh, we, we have the opportunity, even though that, that weight is very heavy, God has given us a gift. And that gift is the Holy Spirit to provide discernment and personal checks uh, that help us to know what to do, you know, right and wrong. Of course, whether or not we listen to that voice is entirely another matter. The Spirit's guidance is available, and the closer and more frequent we communicate with God uh, in prayer and in reading His Word, the greater our sensitivity will be to His voice. And I think that that is the thing, is that a lot of people get into it and they, and they kind of go, man, I just can't figure this thing out. And I think a lot of times it's because we are not putting the habits in place in order for that to happen. It's kind of like going to the gym and saying, Man, I just can't, uh, I can't, you know, lose this weight or I can't, you know, gain this muscle. Um, and what, but when you look at what you're doing at the gym, you're just sitting around watching people or you're having conversations or you're doing one machine. Um, so another, another caveat to this is the, the bad news is that it's often easy also, um, it's often that we get tripped up. Um, and it's, what I'm thankful for is that um, God understands our human nature. That forgiveness, he has forgiveness each and every day for us and is available every day at the beginning and has a new opportunity and is ready and willing and able to forgive us. And of course, the more you develop your relationship with God, the less you'll want to do the things that grieve his heart. Uh, so living a holy life uh, dedicated to serving Jesus is more than being able to check off a list of do's and don'ts or going to the gym and just doing a certain machine, right? It's, it's about our hearts becoming more like the heart of God. It's a process of developing a relationship that becomes more and more important to us all the time. And we want to be holy because it pleases the one we love and who loves us. And until we can figure that piece out, until we can figure out what it means to uh, have this relationship um, with God, uh, 
I, I think the, the longer we're going to struggle with, um, with becoming holy. And uh, so, anyway, that's my thoughts uh, that I've been thinking about um, today uh, and this week. Um, so I hope that you guys take some time uh, there. Do for me. You can do what you can do is after this you can jump into Psalm uh, Psalm ninety nine. If you want to think about the um, the the holiness of God and who He is, jump into Psalm ninety nine. Read through that. It's really short, um, and just just meditate on it. You know, think about those words, but don't just you know, it's really easy for us right now to be uh, passive about our faith because we're stuck in quarantine, right? Uh, we have a great opportunity to reach out to people right now um, and tell them about our Savior, about the, the God that we have a relationship with. So take some time um, and, uh, and do those things. So uh, let me pray real quick. And then uh, we'll wrap things up. And Father God, we thank you so much for this time. Uh, I thank you for the opportunities that you give us each and every day to tell people about who you are. God, I pray that uh, in my own life that you would continue to give me um, the strength and the uh, encouragement to make better habits of, um, so that I can be more like you. Uh, Father, we love you. We thank you. Uh, I pray for all those that are struggling uh, I pray for all those that um, are far from you. I pray that they come near and that they would turn to you for their struggles. And God, we love you. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, guys, uh, have a great rest of your week and uh, take care.